Good morning, good morning, good morning. Blitzball Champ is back here bringing forth a brand new video. So I wanted to take the time to talk about, uh, do a little specs comparison uh, between the upcoming PlayStation 5 and the upcoming Xbox Series X. I know that um, there's been a lot going on, uh, a lot that's been kind of brought into the light, um, even despite, you know, not, you know, with E3 being canceled, but the potentially bringing forth a uh, online uh, experience that maybe we could hear more about both consoles. I know PlayStation, Sony kind of did their own press conference documenting uh, their specs, but hopefully um, we'll get more information um, as time passes. But uh, yeah, just kind of wanted to take some time to talk about uh, this comparison list. I know there's like multiple sources that uh, provide the comparison lists, you know, whether it be IGN or GameSpot or just, you know, different sites. So definitely um, sparked a lot of interest and um, just wanted to hit on some details. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So brought up some of the comparisons. So uh, we know that both consoles are scheduled to release uh, this holiday season of 2020. Uh, we don't know the exact dates yet, but we know that they're coming around the same time frame. So at least we know that, and we can expect both to launch uh, this holiday season 2020, which is this year. So at least we have that to look forward to. Um, processors. So the PlayStation 5 be using a 8 AMD Zen 2 CPU cores clocked at a variable frequency of 3.5 gigahertz. All right, that's PlayStation 5. Um, the Xbox Series X uh, will have a processor of 8 AMD Zen 2 CPU cores clocked at 3.8 gigahertz. So Xbox Series X, a little bit more powerful in that comparison. Uh, the graphics, uh, you'll be able to see a no noticeable difference in the graphics. So PlayStation 5 will be pushing out, can push out up to 10.28 teraflops, 36 CUs clocked at a variable frequency of 2.23 gigahertz, while the Xbox Series X can push out up to 12.16 teraflops, 52 CUs clocked at 1.825 gigahertz. So already, it's safe to say when it comes to graphics and uh, power that it can push, Xbox Series X has the advantage, which ultimately doesn't really surprise me. I feel like for the longest time, as far as processing and graphical power, I've always felt like Microsoft you know, with uh, with their consoles compared to uh, Sony, always kind of had the advantage. So this doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, for RAM, both will be able to, both will have uh, 16 gigs of GDDR6 SD RAM. So uh, both uh, matching in that. Um, for storage, PlayStation 5 will have a 825 gigabyte solid state drive, while the Xbox Series X will have a one terabyte solid state drive. So already by default, the Xbox Series X has, has the advantage in the solid state drive. Um, but both will be able to uh, support expendable, expandable storage. Whereas PlayStation 5 will have a NVMe SSD slot, whereas the Xbox Series X will have a one terabyte Microsoft expansion card slot. So um, looks like you'll be able to um, add more storage. So at least that's good to know. 
least that's good to know being able to add more storage because I I assume that the size of these games, if it's anything like how it is on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you know, the size of these games are big. And I don't expect that to be any different on these next-gen consoles. So the extra storage is going to be needed, definitely. Um, both will have a 4K UHD uh, Blu-ray optical drive, so that's really good. Be able to play your Blu-rays at um, UHD capability 4K. Uh, both will be able to um, output a maximum resolution of 8K. So both of these consoles will be 8K compatible supported. So they can push up to 8K resolution. So I don't know who all out there is... Uh, planning or has a, a 8k television but you know you'll be able to push that power with these consoles you'll be able to push that resolution so um which i got a i got a lot to catch up on i don't even have my own 4k tv so yeah it'll probably be a good long while before i have an 8k tv so but at least it's good to know that it'll be able to push out that maximum resolution of 8K. So that's that's definitely a big accomplishment. Uh, both will have a max refresh rate of 120 uh, hertz. Uh, backwards compatibility. Now this, this was kind of interesting. So both will have backwards compatibility, but with the PlayStation 5, it'll only go as uh, far back as PlayStation 4, whereas uh, the Xbox Series X will go all the way back to the regular Xbox. It'll do Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So, kind of a disappointment with PlayStation 5, because, I mean, you know, it'd be nice if it could go all the way back to... You could go all the way back to at least PlayStation 2. That would be awesome. But, but yeah, that's, to some people, I know that's going to kind of be a disappointment. But there's still more details to be rolled out. So who knows? That might change. Uh, cloud gaming. So we know that Xbox Series X will support the Microsoft Project X Cloud. Uh... For PlayStation 5, it's still not confirmed, but some say that it's probably going to do the whole PlayStation Now, kind of how that's doing on uh, PlayStation 4. So that might be something that gets maintained for uh, PlayStation 5 as well. But uh, we'll see. We'll definitely see. Uh, one of the things that was talked about was uh, VR support. Uh... PlayStation 5 will have VR support. Not confirmed yet on the Xbox Series X. Like, I mean, I don't know. Do y'all think it'll support VR? Me personally, VR is nice, but it's not something that I have to have. You know, I've all, I have respect for it and for what it can do, but VR is just not something that I have to have. You know what I mean? It's just... I like the appeal of it, but it's not something that, you know, where certain games are going to come out, oh, I got to have VR for it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even have a VR headset, so it's not really a big deal to me. So that's that's really just how I look at it. But, but that's just me. That's just me. Uh, let's see. Um, let's look at some other things. So, memory bandwidth. Memory bandwidth for PlayStation 5 is uh, 448 gigabytes, or gigs per second. And uh, for Xbox Series X, it's 10 gigabytes at 560 gigabytes per second. And then 6 of those gigabytes is at 335 gigabytes per second. So, uh, really good memory bandwidth management there for Xbox Series X, but uh, still not bad on uh, PlayStation 5 either. 
But um But yeah, it's just uh let's see. Oh the data transfer speed um via IO throughput for PlayStation 5 it's 5.5 gigabytes per second of raw data and uh nine to eight gigabytes per second of um compressed whereas in the xbox series x uh does uh two i think this is 2.4 gigabytes per second of raw data and 4.8 gigabytes of com per second of compressed so uh Definite noticeable differences in the uh, data transfer speed, so maybe something to keep an eye out. But, uh, but yeah, uh, one of the th features that the Xbox Series X will have is to be able to do the quick resume and support multiple games at once for quick quick resume. Uh, I know normally with Xbox One and uh, PlayStation 4, you could do the, the quick resume for, for one game. So, like, pretty much whatever uh, you were last playing, you could, like, resume from there, um, which I thought was really cool. But for Xbox Series X, you could do that for multiple games. So, I think that's really cool. Um, Well, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, another thing they note they pointed out with uh, USB, uh, which is for um, for ports, I believe. So the for Xbox Series X, that's the only one that they have. The front is a one Type A USB port, and then the rear is the one terabyte external S. SD slot, which can be connected via USB. So that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, but yeah. I mean, overall, it's definitely safe to say, and if there's anything that I'm missing or, you know, any corrections, by all means, do correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, if anything, it's safe to say that the Xbox Series X will be powerful than the PlayStation 5. That's not exactly an end-all, be-all for me. Because for the longest time for me as, a, as an avid gamer, it's all about the quality of the games. It's all about the games for me. Like the systems, great. But it's all about the games for me. Because, I mean, there's still... I still got plenty of the older systems that I still play, you know? I mean, I have a Wii U. I got a Wii U not too long before they finally stopped production of the Wii U. And, you know, that was mainly the reason why I got it. And there's still a few get good games that I, that I play on the Wii U, even though now that the Switch is out, I mean, you know, Switch is kind of the main way to go. But, um, but yeah, for me, it's all about the games. It's all about the games. So, you know, it's not going to be a big deal if, you know, one is graphically, one console is power, more powerful or graphically more powerful than the other. Because, you know, I have, I have PS4 and Xbox One. So, I think the thing for me is, because I got PlayStation 4 first, a lot of the games that I have on there that are also on Xbox One, I already have on PS4. So really on Xbox One, I have just, you know, a few exclusives, you know, Gears of War, Halo, you know, stuff like that. So my library is gonna be much bigger for PlayStation 4. Now, if you ask me, which console would I get first? Like, if I were to get one at launch, which one would it be? That's a good question. That's a really good question. I have never bought a console at launch before. So, 
for the record. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we know that only thing I know is I know Xbox Series X will um, launch and Halo Infinite will be a launch title. But, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's really, really hard to say. And I'm a, and I'm a Halo fan. I'm a Halo fan. So, uh, I don't know. Like, it's it's hard to say. I just feel like I feel like based on what I know now, probably Xbox Series X first, but there's still much more to learn and find out about the PlayStation 5, so I mean, I'm definitely not going to get one at launch, but uh, but yeah, like, if I had to, if I was forced to pick one at launch, it would probably be Xbox Series X, but um, I definitely expect both to uh, deliver greatness. It's just me personally, I'm re not really ready to move to the next gen category because there's still a lot for me to play and experience on the current gen. But it'll be interesting to see as time passes uh, the kind of games that they'll put out for both of these consoles. Because like I said, for me, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, um, anyway, uh, what are y'all, what are y'all's thoughts? Uh, what have y'all, um, taken in from looking at comparisons to both PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? Is there one that you're looking forward to more than the other? Um, have you made a decision on if you're going to get one or the other at launch, or are you going to give it some time? Um, we still don't even know, know a price. For either of these two consoles what's the price going to be you know are they going to be the same same sort of price tier or is one going to be more expensive than the other like there's still so much to to figure out but you know hey it's only march you know we got a whole lot of months ahead of us but i'm hoping that by maybe this summer or by early stages of fall, we'll really get a clear-cut amount of information of um, what these consoles are really going to release with and maybe even more information on some uh, some launch titles, more launch titles. But, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, and thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ checking out. Y'all have a blessed day. Stay safe. And I will see y'all next time. Peace.